The year is 1964 and the sleepy south coast resort of Farmington begins to reveal its sinister underbelly. Dr Wade, or Butcher Wade as he's more popularly known amongst his patients, has been found dead and the local CID suspect murder. But there's been a witness, Sid Plummett. A man dismissed by many as a paranoid hermit, but in reality, a gifted mushroom farmer and visionary poet. He's seen all and clearly terrified, slips away into the night, informing no one. Now this macabre little scene was actually originally destined for this little layout here, which believe it or not, is a coffee table. But I've had second thoughts about it. And I think this belongs in something a little bit larger. In fact, a lot larger. Now when it's finished, this is gonna be part of a model which is gonna be over 400 square feet. It's gonna have villages, towns, branch lines, main lines. It's gonna have working canals, roads. It's gonna be fantastic. And we're gonna show you how to build it. Now, I'm not stupid. Please don't. I didn't just wake up this morning and think I'm gonna build a ruddy great layout. I have been giving this project a great deal of thought. The first thing I had to do was conduct a bit of research. This is absolutely fantastic. Every year, the Worley Model Railway Club take over the NEC here in Birmingham and stage this, only one of Europe's biggest model railway shows. It's absolutely brilliant. Don't worry, we'll be seeing more from the NEC later in the programme. It's pretty obvious that I'm going to need some help. And one of the key members of the team is Brian Taylor. Brian's a professional model maker whose work I've admired for many years. He was originally a graphic artist, and I think that creative flair really shows through in his models. We've spent a great deal of time mulling over various ideas and coming up with a design that we're both happy with. And this is what we come up with. Now I didn't do this drawing, this is Brian's handiwork and well, welcome to Farmerton. thing to remember is that we're making this in double O scale, which if you can remember is 1 to, that's right, 1 to 76 scale, which makes the model, well, roughly scaled up. This is going to be about 40 foot long and around about 10 foot across. It's a great big thing. So what have we got here? Well, it's a south coast town and it's set about the mid 60s. Now the beauty of setting it then is that we've got steam, we've got diesel, and we've even got trams running. We've even got mods and rockers, so we've got loads of things to model. Let's have a look at Farmington itself. Here's our little main town. This is a lovely little seaside town, and in the front of it, just overlooking the sea, is a set of hotels, in front of which runs a little tramway. Now on our layout, the tram line's actually gonna be working, and the tram line runs all the way past the beach, now that is a lovely spot. Sit there on a Sunday, ice cream, beer, looking at the little um, various. Anyway, here is our mainline station. Heading that way would take you up to London. And if you were to pop the other way, you'd be heading out through the countryside and that'd be a fantastic journey because all this bit here is rolling hills. And to give you an idea of the height difference between here and the front here, this would be the seafront and up here would be the top of the hill. So it's about three foot difference between this and that. So this is all rolling hills, very, very pretty. It goes through a little cutting. When it comes out the other side, it crosses a little road. Now on this layout, our roads are actually gonna work. There's gonna be trucks, little cars are all gonna be driving up and down. Then it crosses over a canal. Now a canal is gonna be working. I don't quite know how we're gonna do it yet, but it will be. There'll be little boats and little barges going up and down, plying their trade. So then, the after our canals, it just nips past the MOD site. Now, I could tell you more about that, but if I did, we'd all be in Guantanamo Bay before you can say Christmas, so less said about that, the better. Anyway, underneath all this lot are two branch lines. Now, Mr. Beeching's got his eye on those, so they're up for closure, so we're a little bit worried about them at the moment. And this is where our main line disappears in a little tunnel just beneath the ruins of Fairweather Castle. Moving down towards the sea, our branch line pops out here, and this is where it goes into Gobsmouth, our pretty little fishing village. And here it divides and goes one into the station, and the other section of it goes into our transshipment shed. Now, transshipment shed is where uh, a branch line would meet a narrow gauge railway. In our case, the narrow gauge railway is going to run all the way down along here, and it ends up in my favourite little bit, which is the tin mine, just about here. Over the course of the series, we're going to be building all of this, and you'll meet some of the people who inhabit this little world. 
Here we are, look at that. You recognise some of these faces? He was in the Anedian line, he was in Z cars, and I think that might be Margaret Rutherford. Anyway, it's pretty obvious they're not going to be able to build all of this in here. So we did a bit of head scratching, and we thought this place would be rather fitting. This is the Bluebell Railway down in Sussex, just north of Brighton. Now they've given us one of their buildings to use, which is great. But what's even better is that we've got a unique frame of reference right on our doorstep for all the details which make a good model great. Let's go have a look around. Now this is a lovely old bit of kit, isn't it? This is one of those try you ain't machines. Now I don't need to try it because I know it will read nine stone two. But isn't it fantastic? That's cast iron. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bit of machinery. And look at this lovely enamel sign up. Makers to their majesties, the King and Queen. And that's not Posh and Bex, that's King George and Queen Mary. Look at that. Desperation, pacification, expectation, acclamation, realisation, it's advertising. And look at this, this is all the original luggage. So this is Mrs. W. Abel, and uh, she's going to Bombay. But no mention of Mr. Abel. Well, he had been drinking, things weren't really working out. Off on her own. Can't say I blame her. Now, situated behind the platforms, you might just be able to make out an old warehouse. And this is where it's all gonna happen. What we're looking at here is the modeling equivalent of a blank canvas. Hi, Brian. Hi Simon. Now Brian's up to all sorts over there, more of that in a minute. In the next few weeks, this is going to change dramatically. For example, this is our seaside town. This is where the sea is, there's our seafront with our hotels, the little town suites up here to meet the mainline station. Over here there'll be rolling hills, we've got canals over there, roadways, a little tin mine. It's going to change dramatically. But what I'm interested in at the moment is the baseboard. In essence, it's a very simple thing to build. It's two by two legs supporting a three by one grid-like frame. It's a lovely bit of kit, but what we're interested in is what happens on top. Now, I'm sure you're thinking that this looks like some kind of berserk roller coaster. But what are we looking at here, Brian? Well, this is the skeleton of the whole thing, the bones of the railway, the foundation of everything that we're going to do. I mean, this is the main line crossing the river on a viaduct, right. but this is the branch line. You've got all the roads, the canal, everything. It's the basis of everything that we're actually going to produce. Now, you, you've chosen to work in MDF. Why do you do mm. that? Because it actually lays very flat. It's very easy to cut and it's cheap. Now, flat is a very important thing because anybody that's done any track work at home, I'm sure you've all had a crack at it, know that there are distinct problems in not getting your stuff flat to start with. What happens is any slight distortion on the track like that causes you all kinds of problems. First off, derailment, bad thing. Secondly, and most commonly, the locomotive won't pick up its feed, its electrical feed from the track properly. And it probably grinds the halt somewhere in the middle of the tunnel. Isn't that right, Brian? Not on this railway. That's me told. So you're going to measure up now where the hills are going to go. Yeah, that's right. And while he's doing that, I'm going to show you how we get from here, this two-dimensional plan, to this rather wonderful MDF structure here. Now, to give you an idea of where we are, this is the transshipment shed. We've got a fishing village down here, and there's our tin mine over here. And this is the section where we want to transfer. So what we've done, and it all looks very complicated, but it's very, very simple. Imagine if this was an eight before sheet of MDF. What we've done is drawn a grid pattern onto this section of the plan. Now you get your eight before sheet of MDF and you copy that grid, but scaled up. So this is one to 10. So for every centimetre, you go 10 centimetres. Very simple. Now, once you've done that, you copy your plan onto the eight before sheet of MDF. Now I'm going to draw in this little bit of track that goes along here. Now I've drawn it in in pencil first, so I don't make any mistakes. But what I'm going to do is just draw in where the track is going to run. Now, once you've drawn in this section of the track, I'm going to draw in the other branch line, which goes around the other side of the station there. Now, remember, you're doing this, of course, on an 8x4 MDF sheet, so it's in a much larger scale. Now, once that's all drawn in, 
and you've finished your section of the railway, what you're going to do is start cutting it out. Now imagine this is the same sheet of MDF, but you've actually started cutting out the track. So there's our first cut. Now, the important thing to remember is this is the centre line of your track. So when you come to cut it out, you have to remember to leave space either side. So if it's a single line piece of track, it wants to be two inches wide. And if you've got double track, it wants to be four inches wide. So you make your first cut. This is this section here we got rid of. This isn't waste because you can use it in another section. And you make your second cut here and then your third. And this is the beauty of working with MDF because it's nine millimetres thick, so it's got a little bit of flexibility. So what you end up with is a piece of MDF that looks like that. Now you've got all your gradients and all your curves and it's just ready to plonk into the layout. Now if you'd like to find out how to make a fantastic little cottage and meet a very important member of our cast, then stick around. Have you done that yet, Brian? Yeah, it's all finished. It can be very sarcastic at times, especially today. Our 400 square foot model of the sleepy South Coast Resort of Farmington is going to need a few more characters than a dead GP, an overweight police officer and a terrified witness. Enter stage left, Rose Bean. Now she may look like a retired genteel old lady, but don't be fooled. She's spent all her life as a double agent. KGB, CIA, MFI, she's worked for the lot. And she's come to see out her retirement in a little cottage in Farmerton. This cottage, in fact. Now this has been built by Brian, and it's really rather fantastic. There's lots of ways of making buildings, and we've been looking at different methods throughout the series. This one is made of card. The first thing you're going to have to do, whichever method you're going to use, is decide on dimensions. Now you can get those from plans, or you can take photographs. And once you've worked out one dimension, it's fairly easy to work out all the other different sizes based on that. For example, a door is going to be roughly six foot six by three foot three. So from that, it's easy to work out the dimensions. Once you do that, it's just transferring it to the card. The first thing we're going to do is to cut out our flat base lines. Always work with a steel straight edge. If you tend to work with wood or anything else, there's a chance that it can cut into it. You won't have a straight edge and it'll slide off. You can end up cutting yourself. And gently, gently, gently score through the card. Now the next cut to do are the side cuts. Now this is very, very important. Now this is a picture frame. And what they've done here is they've mitered the corners. They've cut it at 45 degrees across there. Now what happens on the edge, if you can see there, is you get a very, very sharp, smooth cut. So what we've got to do is do that on our piece of card. Now you take the scalpel and you hold it at 45 degrees away from you. And again, it's a lot of very gentle cuts. Now once you've cut it all out, you can start gluing it together. But the important thing here, and this is the trick, is to use these little chappies here. They're little tabs. I've drawn a bigger one here. What you've got is a little triangle. You cut that out and you score down these sections here. Not all the way through, but halfway through the card. Now the important thing is, is to nip off a little L section here. Now what that's going to do is to give you two faces from which you can glue to. Now I'm going to use a contact adhesive. I know a lot of people like using PVA. I know Brian does. But I find contact adhesives a little bit quicker. Here's our back wall. And this should line up perfectly with this. There we go. Now those corner tabs hold the whole thing nice and rigid and keep the whole thing square. Now the next thing we've got to do is to pop the roof on. So I've cut a piece of card and it's got a little bit of overhang so it's a little bit larger and wider than the original wall. And we just slide him over the top there. Now that might look a little bit fiddly but if you got this far I'm sure you'll get the rest of it because all you need now is two little side pieces there and there, and there's the roof. The more observant ones amongst you may have noticed that, of course, Rose's cottage is actually thatched, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do next. It's actually very, very simple. And what we're going to use is this stuff here. Now, this is plumber's hemp. Now, am I the only one thinking Tammy Winnett here? But you get it from a plumber's merchant, and it's as cheap as chips. Now, I've got a section of the roof here. Or it's larger than the one we use, and just to give you a better idea. And I'll show you how we do it. The first thing to do is to get some PVA, which is this chap here. Now, don't be afraid of putting on quite a lot, because it does soak it up, this stuff. Nice dollop of PVA there. Then you take some of the plumber's hemp. Now, what you need is a quite a sharp pair of scissors, because it's reasonably tough to cut. And cut off about 
an inch to an inch and a half. Now, if you're doing a smaller model, obviously it'd be a slightly shorter section, but because I'm doing this one and it's on a larger scale, I'm using bigger chunks. And all we do is to pop that on there. And what you end up with is basically a fluffy section like this. Now, what I've done here is I've given it a bit of a haircut. All you do, once that's all dried, it goes rock hard. And then you just go along and with a nice sharp pair of scissors, you just give it a little haircut like that. There we are, sir. Going on holiday this year, sir? Anywhere nice, sir? There we are. Parting to the left. But what Brian's done here is he's just finished the cottage off with some nice little details. Now what he's done firstly is to paint the thatch. He's done a nice brown colouring in there. And he's also laid some cotton round the outside of the thatch just to make it look like it's been weaved in properly. Also another little couple of bits of details. He's pinched the chimney pot from another kit. The windows are a nice feature and what Brian's used there is etched brass kits. Now you can buy these in sheets. On a sheet like that there's probably 25 or 30 windows. You can paint them either on the sprue to make it easier like this or you can take them off and paint them individually. And once you cut them out you just simply pop them behind to get the finished thing. Now Brian's finished these by using a little bit of plastic, clear plastic behind there to represent the glass. Now the other thing he's done, he's weathered the building. Now we're going to be talking about that later on in the series. And he's also put ivy growing up the side to it. And all he used is foliage material, a little bit of contact adhesive, all in all a fantastic little model. And when you put all these things together, you get this, a lovely little cottage. Now I could live there myself, only not with Rose. And also I think she's probably looking for a non-smoker. <laughs> Anyway, earlier in the programme I said I'd be taking a look at some of the models that caught my eye at the NEC, and true to my word, here they are. One of the first things that grabbed my attention was this layout made by Chris Peacock. Called Cowstock Key, it was inspired by a photo of the East Cornwall Mineral Railway taken at the end of the 19th century. Because that's a, that's a fantastic bit of modelling, yeah. just the, uh, the incline there. The incline is actually quite simple. It's actually a piece of wood that we've raised up. We've laid the track up the wood, and at the top on there, there's a chain, and the chain is lowered down by an electric motor, and the weight of the wagons pull the wagon down. I'm a big boat fan, so I mean, mm -hmm. one of the first things that caught my eye is the fantastic boat and the little harbour scene at the end. Yeah. Well, the boat at the end is actually a model of a tamer catch. A lot of rivers around the country had their own design of boats. They'd load up with ore, copper ore, from here. They would then sail round the coast of Cornwall, up the Severn, to places such as Swansea, Aberdulas in Swansea, where they'd unload the, the copper ore, load up with coal and other things like that, and then come all the way back again. And in fact, these boats had a crew of three. And it's quite amazing because those guys would sail round, land on the tide, unload about 15 tonnes of mineral, all by manual. There's no winches, no nothing. So they, yeah. would, they wouldn't have had, originally they wouldn't have had locomotives, it was all horse drawn. We've had to alter history a little bit here and actually use locomotives. Now if you're a member of the club and you can't quite agree on what era to model, you can do what the Chelmsford and District Model Railway Club have done with their Stoke Bishop to Philbridge layout. Now this is a, a U-shape setup, so a 50 foot round, and what they've done is set it in a kind of hazy period, a bit like my wardrobe, anywhere between 1930 to 1975. Very nice, lovely bit of scenery and little detail with a little sailor. Well, I think he's a sailor, he might be an exotic dancer, it's, it's hard to say, but it's, it's some lovely bits and pieces down here. I love the garage, but then the little guy scratching his head as he tries to figure out how to mend the car. This is John and Jane Jacobs with their charming layout, Kingston Regis. 
John, Jane, there's so many things that have caught my eye about this layout. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. So, where is it? Is it what's it based on? Is it uh, well, a it's, real place? It's or? freelance, but it is based sort of somewhere in southwest England, um, and, and it's set in 1912. Uh, and, and John, what's, what scale is this? What's going right, on? The scale here? is one to seventy-six, which is four millimeters to one foot, and it's commonly known as 009. How long did this take to build? Two years from start to finish. Two years. Yeah. Uh, how do you divide the labour up? Well, I do the sort of the railway, the, the track work, the points, and the rolling stock, and the baseboard scenery. But, but Jane paints the back scenes, builds all the buildings, makes the trees, and paints the people. Well, tell me about the church. Where, where was that from? The, the church is based on one in Caldercott on the Leicestershire, North Hampshire border. We just happened to be driving by it, saw it, photographed it. It's as simple as that. And how long did that take to make? Oh, uh, about a month, I suppose. A month? Possibly, maybe less than that. Now you'll remember making Rosie's cottage, so we're going to go and put her in the layout now. That's where she lives on the plan, so let's go and orientate ourselves around there. She lives, if we have a look here, just there. Now, Sid Plummett is the only witness to Dr Wade's horrible murder, and he's absolutely terrified. Lights please, gentlemen. Hang on a minute, I'm trying to work here. Shut your mouth, this is drama. What do you think this is? I don't care what that is. Anyway, Sid feels the only person he can talk to is Rose. So he goes round to see her late at night, but she's not there. So he pops a note through a letterbox. Sid is being followed. There was another person in the car that night, and only Sid knows their true identity. To keep pace with our plot, which take it from me as a good few surprises, both nice and nasty in store, we're going to have to really get cracking with our model. We're going to be showing you how to build working trams, haunted castles, underground chambers, canals and a whole lot more. We'll also get to see great models built by some very talented modellers. So see you soon and if you're going anywhere near Farmerton, I keep your car doors locked. <laughs>